did. Uh, Tremaine Hayho from Hayho Studios. Tremaine, what's up? How's it going, guys? Hello. Thank you so much for having me on here. Oh, it's our pleasure. We're a absolutely thrilled to have you with us. And we all, I believe, I uh, have to check with Jason. Jason, have you actually watched the movie? I did. I watched it about 90 minutes ago. Oh, oh my gosh. Fresh. Wow. Fresh. 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 Yes. So, um, so we want to talk a little bit about about the movie, about what it took to put it together. All together, some uh, pieces in there I want to ask you about. And, um, you know, some of it I think everybody loves. Other people are like, why did you make that decision? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Oh, oh, my gosh. I'm in the hot seat. Okay. All right. No, I got yes, answers. Sir. I got Absolutely. answers. <laughs> you're, you're on the Judge Judy show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. So, uh, so break out your gummy bears. And, uh, oh, no, no, no yes. more gummy bears for me. Uh, yes, gummy bears and water, guys. You know, the two. Gummy bears and water. Uh, <laughs> many, many water bottles. Many. Oh, my God. <laughs> gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So this is going to be interesting. So since uh, since I'm hosting the program, I'm going to go first and just butt right to the front of the line. I gotta say, I, for what it is, I enjoyed it. I was telling Jason before everybody else got here that uh, if this was you know a fifty million dollar budgeted blockbuster movie, I'd be like, oh come on, how can they do that? Uh, on the other hand, when I realize that you know this is just a low budget, let's put it together and do our best job. We, I love it. I love what you did. I love how you put it together. Uh, there were so many things in there that um, uh, you, you had to have done your research uh, that, you know, it could be, um, I don't know, were you out driving? Did you have to uh, do that? I mean, it, here, here's one of the, the, the things that I hear all the time. So, is this your main gag? <laughs> yep. Uh, another one I, I, I get I get all the time is, uh, let's see, uh, I think it's this one. So, how do you like driving? Yeah, do you do the lift as well? Do you ever get any weirdos in the car? Oh my god, please tell us some story. That, I get that all the time. I, yep. it, and it happens to especially if it's a younger couple, that's like verbatim. From you know, I can show you recording after recording of people get in the car and go. So, do you do this all the time? Do you also drive Lyft? Tell us a story. Oh, we got to hear a story. Tell us a story every day, every day. What was your inspiration for this? What brought this about? Totally. So, um, a few years back, I was about to turn thirty, and uh, I, I have my video pr production business and. As a freelancer, you know, freelance production, you get really busy a lot of times, and then sometimes you don't get busy at all. So I started doing, um, to kind of keep myself out of trouble on the weekends, started doing Uber, you know, made, made some extra money. And, uh, you know, I, I'd made a bunch of music videos, short films, stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm about to turn 30. Like, what the hell's my deal? I, I, you know, I'm in LA. I call myself a filmmaker, but I've never made a single film in my entire life, not a feature film at least. So I'm like, well, you know, what do I what do I do? So um, I was an Uber driver and I'm like, oh, man, this is like prime for for horror, like a horror movie, you know. And I think especially for a first time filmmaker, first time feature film, I believe horror movie is kind of the way to go. You, you have a little bit more leeway in terms of, uh, you know, people are a little bit more forgiving when it comes to a horror movie. And, um, you know, and, and so like I had this hairbrand idea of uh, – about a killer Uber driver, killer rideshare driver, and um, ended up going to a bachelor party. I'm like, well, I need money, you know, to make the movie, you know, and I, I didn't want to be like pulling favors type thing. It's, you know, when you get to be in your 30s and try to like uh, be professional, you, it's it's not cute anymore when you're like pulling favors, you know. Um, so I want to be able to pay people and I also want people to, to take it seriously. But I'm like, oh, well, how do I come up with all this money? You know, like, do I just work for for it or... You know, um, and essentially, uh, I'm like, well, you know, two days later, I'm at a bachelor party. One, one guy's like, hey, 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 ho, you know, do you have any cool projects uh, happening? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, always have cool projects happening. You know, always work on something. And uh, he's like, oh, do you have any projects that need investors? And I'm like, 
uh, I don't know why. And he's like, well, because I'm looking to invest. And I'm like, yes, I do have a project, actually. It's a, <laughs> it's a horror movie <laughs> about a killer rideshare driver, killer Uber driver. And he's like, oh, wow, that's a really cool idea. I mean, little did he know, like, I hadn't written a, a word of the script yet. Um, so, but I just had that idea. And he's like, well, hey, put something together and pitch me on Monday. So I did. I, I pitched. And then I was like, hey, you know, after the first guy put in his little, you know, amount of money. And, and like, you know, with, with all my friends being in their, like, early 30s, they all had, like, stable jobs, you know, like, unlike me. So, you know, but they had, like, a couple, you know, a couple little bit, little, little money laying around. So uh, I was able to raise uh, some of the money uh, that way. And then everything else, you know, all the other side gigs that I did went, went towards the the movie and and then um i raised like half the money and i'm like oh my god i gotta write the, this damn script so um yeah i wrote the script i actually wrote it on my phone in the Be beverly hills public library so i would go um october 2017 i sat in the library on my phone like these librarians probably thought he's like who's this w w wacko who just sits on his phone all day in the library <laughs> little did you know you know i was i was writing um the movie, so, um, and a then, movie. yeah, so, so, and then also like being at the library, you know, uh, there's like all, all these cool screenwriting books. There's all these like how to make movies type books. And I mean, I'd read a bunch of those and before and, and all that stuff, but, uh, yeah, there's nothing to it, but to do it. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it all started. Uh, so when you were, Going to school? Did you go to school for this? Uh, yeah. Oh, and I guess I didn't really answer your question. Um, sorry. I'll answer your other question too. I, I did Uber, and everyone asked me the same damn questions every single time. You know, and then like everything else. Yep. You know, oh, do you do this for? Do you, oh, is this your main gig or is this just your side hustle? Literally, pretty almost like every night. And then, um, and then, Tremaine, you. But as you and I have talked about, you forgot one. One of the main ones, dude. Oh, One which, of the main ones. You got the rest, but can I tip you through the app? Oh, gosh, yeah, that's a good one. Right, yeah. Actually, I think... Or, or, or just opposed to it, I, I, I got you covered on the app. Oh, right, yeah. Like, which oh, means yeah. And then gonna, some, some actually do it, some, some actually don't. They just say they will, and then they never do, you know, but... <laughs> most, um, most do not. Yeah, most don't, yeah, but... Uh, yeah, if, they, if they talk about it or bring it up, they're not going to tip you. Right, yeah. If they're going to do it, they just do it. You know, they right. say, right. yeah, yeah, no, that's a yeah. good point. That's a good, that's a good one. Um, so <laughs> anyway, well, oh yeah, uh, to answer your question, I, I was actually um, film school reject. So I got rejected from film school. Um, I, uh, I was at San Diego State. I applied for the film program there. Um, I had just above a 3.0. You need at least a 3.0 to even apply. So, I, you know, I, I had like a 3.1 and uh like i got decent grades but i i could have tried a bit harder like you know and but i by that time i was i just wanted to make movies you know so but i had a whole i had dozens of music videos that i'd done i'd done short films i i worked at i worked at the tv studio there kpbs i had a rave review from the president of kpbs like giving me this stellar review about how great i am and how um <laughs> how much of a hard worker i was um and uh yeah i got rejected got rejected from uh from them they didn't really say why uh, i think it was the grades um other people that had grades of like 3.7 and above um but zero actual um zero actual work uh making movies or any f short films whatsoever they got in they got in easily so um it was actually a blessing in disguise though because it, it you know i mean really put a chip on my shoulder and a fire in, under my ass and uh <laughs> you know i hung up the rejection letter in my uh in my uh <laughs> in my you know my room my, my college room and uh um and uh yeah the guy jack jack is his name um I guess I won't say his last name, but yeah, it was inspiring. You know, it was inspiring to say the least. So um, even with all the credentials and actually doing the film, it's like, it, you know, it was like, you know, I was still getting rejected. I, I was able to graduate early. So I technically have a film critic degree. I have a literal bachelor of science or BS degree um, is what I like to call it, what it is. <laughs> so I can, by my degree, I can write about film and I can critique film. 
but I don't have the filmmaking school, you know. But I still, I, I helped out on set. I was always helping out on every single set. Like I, like people thought, like I worked on more short, short films and student films than the people that were actually in the program because I, I actually was able to work on everyone else's films and I learned a lot from everyone else. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I uh, cut my teeth, so. Um, where, where did you find the talent? Were these people you knew, or did you do like a regular movie casting call with callbacks? How did that procedure go? Combination of both. So I had worked at a YouTube uh, production um, after, I, um, after I moved to LA, after I graduated, I graduated in 2010, I moved to LA uh, January 2011, and got a job at this YouTube, uh, like basically YouTube, production studio so all these uh, youtubers that were making videos it was cool it was like you know it was like film it was the, this was like my real film school because these are youtubers that are making they're making short films or they're making sketch comedy videos or like parody videos or even if they're silly like they actually ended up getting really high quality so they ended up being like quote unquote real productions so i learned a lot from there and i also met a lot of great talent there so a lot of my friends that i met there i ended up casting in the movie like um liam kyle sullivan uh, he was the guy that that said, "Do you do the lift as well, as well?" Like the couple, him and his wife. That's his real wife in real life too. Oh, um, they, yeah, they were awesome. Yeah, they're oh great. Gosh. Yeah, they're they're both super funny. Yeah, Liam and Alana. They, they, oh my god! And he was having me crack up, and he's like, uh, you know, it, it, and the, and that's also like I call it, I call this movie my love letter to L.A. Um, because there's, <laughs> there, there, there's all these things like if they do improv they're going to invite you to their improv show you know what I mean like oh you gotta come you know hey, oh, oh parking is only five dollars you know it's like it's literally that's this is what you know this movie wrote itself essentially um, so I, I just kind of took where did you find the lead guy Jason where did you find him actually finally enough so it, was, it was, so this is kind of a crazy story so um, so the last they, they kind of know I've tipped them in on our secondary call oh okay um, cool cool yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah go I think, ahead you know go this, ahead. Steven, so. I tell you what let's hold that let's hold that question for just a minute and take a quick break we'll be back in just a couple of minutes right here on TNC Radio Live. this is Driver Nation stay tuned uh, the main reason I wanted to break here I'm working some uh, not great sound from you there oh uh, are you on a sorry I'm on uh, speakerphone um, or something Okay. Now, I think it's the internet signal. Stop the speakerphone. Oh. Yeah, something. Yeah, something's not coming through quite right. Okay. Let me. See. I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. Oh, you know what? I think I have. I should telling them how uh the even the how you and i did that call after i i had noticed that bad remark on about the the killer being too close to uh um the person in kalamazoo and then that whole thing that sparked because i i defended you blindly and was like no, it isn't. Then you were like, "Yeah, it was." <laughs> well, the the look, the yeah, I, it, well, you know, the the look was based off of him, right? Uh, right. So, so the look, the look was definitely based off of him. So, um, yeah, yeah, the look was spot on. yeah. Thank you, thank you. That was uh, uh, Francis, our hair and makeup gal. Uh, she did that, um, and, and so, yeah. What's really funny is like he really looks nothing like. Uh, that that character you know so i guess it's kind of funny um bradley laborman who who played jason 
jokes that I guess, I guess he looked like his older brother or something. <laughs> so he like teased his older brother saying, oh, I look like you now or I don't know. But um, I guess to answer your question, it was kind of crazy because that was the last, the last cast that I found was the lead. Um, I cast everyone else except for the lead. And I was, it was just getting ridiculous. I'm oh, like, wait, maybe we, maybe we should pause. I was just yeah. mentioning, cause this yeah, is going to be, we're not back up yet. Oh yeah. shit. Okay. My yeah. bad. Yeah. I thought we were, I just, well, I just wanted to clarify that they kind of knew. So you didn't have, uh, just so in the, deep, Oh, I'm sorry. The, my the, bad. The dive, you could understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll be back here in about, about a minute. I know this is what I was telling you, Tremaine. It's weird that it's radio, right? Because you just think you're podcasting, but really, there's there's music playing right now to the people listening. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's awesome. That's really so, cool. Yeah, we're yeah, we're we're, uh, we're broadcasting twenty four seven. We're not always live, but we're always broadcasting. Wow, that's really cool, guys. Yeah. Um, what made you guys start start all this? That, that, yeah, that's going to take more than a minute. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I'll give you that story uh, at, at, at uh, another property. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, and coming in in five, four, three, two. This is Driver Nation, Tom Kelly, along with Jason and Steve and Chopper Bill, and our special guest, whose name just went completely... Tremaine. Out. Tremaine Hale. Hey <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I know my name, luckily, so I got you. I got you, bro. Yeah, thanks. So, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's, hey, it's Friday night. What can I tell you? You were just that's thinking right. ride share movie. It's been a long week. Like, it's been yeah. a long week. I, I almost gave him another Jason, you know, Jason and uh, Jason. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Jason. That's the thing. So we, were, we were talking right before the break about uh, the the um, the casting that you went on here and casting uh, the the uh, lead actor and all that. So let's pick up from there. Uh, so the uh, the killer goes by Jason. Correct. Yes, Jason. So. Casting Jason, he was the last, the lead. He was the last person I cast in the whole movie. And I was, it was so frustrating because like I asked everyone, they pretty much said yes. And I, fun fact, I, I originally wrote this movie for, I mean, do you guys know the YouTuber, uh, YouTube legend, uh, Tazon Day? The Chocolate Rain, Chocolate Rain. Do you guys know no, that? I haven't seen that. No, okay. Well, there was like a video that went viral. It like has like a hundred million views or whatever. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. He has a really deep voice. And he's very like kind of deadpan type, um, but he's really kind of skinny. And you know, but he has this perfect voice. And I kind of uh, I wrote it for him with thinking about him in mind. And and he also said, oh, I always wanted to play a bad guy in a movie. Like I want I want like a leading role. All this stuff. I'm like, okay, great. So I, I, you know, I wrote it and I sent it to him and he said no. So he said no. He was the one person that said no. Um, but I mean, hey, it's totally cool. And actually it ended up working out really well because um, he, it, the, it wasn't right. It had to be kind of a bigger character. Uh, so, you know, I was, I'm friends with, you know, Brad Man at, at, at the time and, uh, you know, he was, I was helping him out, I think with, with something and, and he was like, oh yeah, you know, you should, you should put me in, in my movie, in, in your movies or, you know, or whatever. You know, I'm like, you know, people say that. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, kind of brushing it off. And then I was getting really frustrated. I wasn't finding the damn actor. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And he's like, he ha he, he's like, hey man, uh, I'm broken down uh, at this, you know, I'm broken down at this Arco, my tire's out. I'm like, oh, can you just call AAA? He's like, can, can I, can you help me out with the tire, like changing my tire? And I'm like, can you just call AAA, <laughs> you know? And he's like, well, AAA is going to be like two hours. I'm actually right down the street from you. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, screw it. Uh, sh you know, sure. I'll, I'll go help you out. And I was actually, I was really frustrated with not, you know, not being able to cast this lead actor, like put out the casting notice. No one's any good. And, um, so I'm like, okay, I'll get this my mind off things. So anyway, so I go to Arco and I help him change his tire and everything. And he's like, oh, how's everything going with you? I'm like, oh, I'm just really frustrated. I, you know, I'm just trying to cast this damn movie. I can't find the lead. 
And um, so, you know, he's like, well, I'll, I'll read for you. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, all right, I mean, all right, sure. Well, you know, why not? And, and also, like, I went to change his tire and I'm like, oh, he has a Prius. So he's driving a Prius. In the movie, it's a Prius. And he goes, oh, yeah, also, I, uh, I, I, uh, sorry, I, I get kind of sidetracked. I'm, my mind's like kind of wandering around. Um, uh, but, but yeah, no, so, so he's driving a Prius. He also drives Uber side, you know, as a side gig. He, he, he gets it. I'm like, okay, this is kind of interesting. So we, we went back to his place and he's like, you know what? Like, we're starting to read the script and uh, he's like, you know what? Let me, let me read this in the car. Let's go in the car. And it sounds really weird, but like, he's like, here, sit in the back and I'll deliver the lines. And so he sat in the front seat and I sat in the back. He delivered the lines. He looked in the mirror and he gave me chills. I'm like, oh my God. And I couldn't, I didn't say a word, right? He's like, you know, we went through a scene. He's like, hey, do you need me to do this again? Do, I could do it a different way. I, uh, what do you need from me? Do you have any questions for me? You know, you know, I'm like, oh, let's just go back inside. And he's like, oh, come on. I, like, I could do it again. I could say it again. Or, you know, I, I have seriously do you have any questions i'm like i'm like i already have i, I just have one question for you and uh he goes what i'm like do you want to be the lead in this movie <laughs> yeah. and he goes hell yeah so it gave me a high five and yeah. it was like a cool little moment i knew right then and there like this yeah. this is the guy so um yeah so that's how that's how we cast him that is that is awesome that is a great story Thank you. Was it his, did you use his Prius in the movie? Yeah, so it was his Prius in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, which R.I.P. By the way, I guess I guess it got in an accident or it got total or something happened and uh, it's no longer around. So it's it's the legend, but it'll always be in film history in the movie Rideshare. So um, That's awesome. yeah, yeah. So. Now, some of the other actors were amazing. You know who I, they were all good. The one I really liked was the guy in like the white face goth makeup. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that kind of, that yeah. kind of blew me away because, you know, it was like, oh, dude, whatever. That's what you expect. But he was extremely intelligent and a wonderful conversation. I'm like, well, this guy is sharp as hell. I really enjoyed his part. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, that, that, thank you. That's my friend Alex, Alex Farnham. He's really funny he does a lot of impersonations and he's an actor himself he's a, a youtuber as well shout out to alex farnham and uh that character you know it was funny i i made a music video for trace cyrus um <laughs> he so trace cyrus is uh is miley's miley cyrus's brother right and he's covered in head to toe with tattoos head to toe tattoos whole face whole head to you know I actually wrote that part for him because he looks, you know, he's got all these tattoos. He looks, you know, from the outside, like, oh, who's this guy? But then you talk to him, he's actually a really smart guy, super nice, super sweet dude, like chill down to earth guy. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, it's like how a lot of times we judge people, we judge a book by its cover, you know? And uh, I hit him up to play it and uh, he just didn't get back to me. So, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> so Alex uh, actually ended up, uh, hanging out with him later on. It's like, oh, sorry, man, I'm not, I'm not really an actor. I, I didn't think I could do it. And, you know, so I'm like, no, no, no worries. But, but anyway, Alex did it. He did a great job. And uh, I was actually going to really, cut, you know, what's funny is like, I was going to cut that whole scene because I'm like, oh, it's kind of long, kind of goes on and on. But like, I'd gotten a lot of good feedback from people like you guys saying, oh, you know, it, it was actually a really deep conversation. And, and that is like a turning point too for that character. It's like, he does, the one guy that he does like, um, ends up being this yeah. guy that he, he well, and, and I think as a driver we've all had that experience where somebody's yeah. in the car and you're thinking ah, crap don't yeah. judge a book by its cover and, and, and you have this negative reaction to it and then they get in and by the time the ride's over you're thinking that was pretty good that was, not only that you kind of you kind of crave those normal conversations in a, in a night of driving drunk around absolutely, around. absolutely. yeah, yeah and it becomes something more right. than just like hey do you do this for uh, get, side gig you know like the the you know oh how's the weather outside you know it's like it's actually you get a deeper conversation that that that's yeah that's really cool um, yeah it is, it is. I mean, you you braced it up in a lot of ways too where it was just ready to again like i told you guys on the show last week i said you just you when you watch it you're gonna want you're gonna want everybody to die <laughs> 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 but, but like honestly like even like when he gets in it's 
Where, where is it? It's to the uh, to the moratorium or the cemetery. Uh, yeah. Or yeah, no, 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 to the, the, yeah, the cemetery. Right, but it's like you now you're more creeped out, but he's just working. <laughs> right, he's got the graveyard shift. You guys like that? You guys like yeah, that? Well, that was funny. Yeah. I have a question. Tremaine, why did you, uh, I noticed you labeled it as a horror flick, so I texted Steve, I'm like, I don't do horror, dude, like, but it's more, it's not really horror, it's a thriller, or maybe I read that wrong. No, you know, the thing is, it, you know, you're right. I, I, actually, if anything, if it's, if it's more accurate, description is probably dark comedy really you know yeah that's but, what i did. I yeah so, so, Jason, i was like I, I think it's a comedy maybe a thriller but yeah it, and it's funny like we get that like oh i thought it was a really horror movie this is actually kind of funny like oh is this supposed to be funny you know people are like is this supposed to be funny you know like oh wait a second you know <laughs> and and uh <laughs> yeah no so i mean i say horror just because it's it's just easier to describe to be honest, you say, oh, yeah, it's a horror movie. Yeah. But I say, I say like, you know, more suspense. I, I, I always say, like, oh, okay, it's PG-13. There's no blood. Um, there's, no, there's no gore. I'm not a huge blood or, or gore guy. Um, you know, like, and, and, like, the Saw movies, I think they, 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 they take care of that pretty well, you know. So yeah. I didn't want to. Plus, that makes everything more expensive and really sticky and messy. So it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just go kind of the Hitchcock approach and not, you know. Hitchcock's my, my favorite uh, director of all time so you so know. a couple more questions one yeah. what was was that his girlfriend that he came home to i i didn't quite get that and two and what's with the the blonde with all the food over her face like when she was eating that sandwich i was like this is gross <laughs> yes awesome that's awesome that's great you had that response. that's exactly what i was going for but so <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of like for for me, I, I put a lot of kind of my own pet peeves in this movie, like you know, so so it's like I I cannot stand when someone has horrible table manners. I cannot stand, oh. and when people are licking their fingers, oh my god, it's like oh, nails yeah. on chalkboard for me, you know. Um, right. So like I knew that would kind of get a reaction, and there's like you know I've been you know in L.A. you you get like a cute girl and she'll just eat like a complete pig. You know, and it makes even a hot chick to be very unattractive, you know, so. Yes. Um, yeah, so so that's kind of a, yeah, that, that's kind of what, what, what we were going well, for you, there. you got the reaction you wanted. Yeah, yeah, totally. And actually, the, the biggest, the best reaction at the premiere was after the hula girl, the hula doll. Uh, when he oh, yeah. Yeah, when he chokes her, uh, yeah. he chokes her oh, the hula doll. And, oh, oh. and then he gets in and he licks it. And like uh, the, the audience reaction was gold. Oh my gosh! Everyone's just like, oh, uh. <laughs> and I'm just like in my seat, like yes, 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 yes. You know. So uh, yeah, that you know, you you want to get certain reactions uh, uh, from from the audience. And oh, uh, sorry, what was the what was the first question? The girlfriend. Oh, um, was that his girlfriend? I don't. I couldn't. Uh, darker hair. It was kind of in a. And just in a room, he ends up killing her at the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yes, more spoilers, guys. Uh, so so yeah. So that's actually that is a good question, and that is something well, that was wait, that was wait, supposed wait, to be wait, more. Wait, before you answer, oh, don't yeah. give away the ending because this is people need to watch this movie. Yeah, check out you guys. Check out the movie. Check out the movie. I won't give away the ending because I'm not exactly sure what it was. That's another one of my questions. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we, can, we can talk about that during one of the dark times. There well, you maybe, yeah. maybe, you know, guys, if you guys haven't seen it, go just go check it out. But if you have seen it, um, I don't know, I guess minor spoilers. I, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to answer this we'll, question. We'll, we can talk about that. I mean, if it's fun and it's not going to wreck it, let's do it. It's, it so that, break, that we is... Can, we can explain it to all... To, people that did watch yeah so so for the people that have watched it if you guys haven't watched it yet maybe change the channel but come right no, back no, come, no, 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 no don't change the channel don't change the channel stay right yes, here stay don't right. don't don't give it away <laughs> okay i won't give it away i won't give it away yes, but yes, it's yes, yes. let's talk about the character it okay the character wasn't his girlfriend let's put it that way okay it wasn't his okay. girlfriend right. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, that answers your oh. question yeah. I just got it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, just got, got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. That's All right. That answers the question. Let's uh, let's take a quick break and uh, come back. Wrap up this hour, and then uh, are you able to stay w uh, with us over the top of the hour? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm here. You guys got Great. me. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep talking. You're awesome. listening to TNC Radio Dot Live. Here's a little ZZ Top from our own backyard. Oh, I love ZZ Top. Right. I just got that at the. I I still. 
That's so funny. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Dude, honestly, like, I just didn't want the, that to be given away. I wasn't trying oh, to, like... Yeah, we probably should have talked about that the t- before we started. I never thought about that. But... Dude, because honestly, I had to, with the first time I watched it, by the end, I was like, huh? And then I, I had to go back a little bit because I knew I must have just missed it. And I went back about ten minutes, and then I was like, what the... Okay, why did I miss that? Yeah, to, to be fair, there was supposed to be... There was another scene in there with the twin brother and then the white... So... It, it's not fully explained because we cut, we literally cut out this, this scene because we just couldn't do it. Uh, but it was, uh, he was supposed, to, the, his brother has a wife and kids, okay? But the brother's cheating on his girl, on his wife with this girlfriend who's like this Black Widow, that Black Widow character uh, kind of girl uh, on the side. That's not explained at all. I don't assume for anyone to pick that up because it's Thank not goodness. really ex- explained. Uh, so, right, you know. Right, so it wasn't the driver that was cheating. That's another point that when you hit that, that's weird because you're like, this doesn't seem to match his... It doesn't at all, and so so, and, and that's the whole thing is like so this other, so that girl is a girl that the twin brother is seeing, and then when she goes when she goes, oh, I didn't know you had tattoos, right? Yeah. Well, that's because he's not, he's not the brother, yeah. right? right. He's, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what 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 we're going for. So, I but I think I think for anyone else that you know, if you see it, you know, just know that it's like. Oh, it's the twin brother's girlfriend. You're not really supposed to know it's like, the girl that she's. Like when I when I first met Tremaine over like well over a year ago, it was funny because I said to him that, um, uh, you know, I actually was giving him a compliment online because I said, I said it's it, it's messed up, you know. I said because honestly, you know, I I don't. I said the same thing we were just talking about about uh, not being really uh, horror. And I didn't think so, but I didn't refer to it as comedy either. I was like. And I know this is a weird comparison. This probably gets into budget, but I compared it to Usual Suspects wow. because I was like, "Dude, you're so damn confused at parts because you've got the main line going, and then at the end, it's like pulling a Tarantino on you. It's like, ah, no, it was the chocolate donut that did. It's like, what? The hell? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know. So it is kind of like that is something where got, Tremaine got right back to me. It was like, thanks, man. That's like one of the best comments. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge compliment and that's very very flattering but you know i i don't know it's it's hard for me you know that's that's you know that's a i don't know that's a thank you thank you i'll just say thank you but uh you know i don't know i i don't think i don't think of myself as i, I don't know whatever uh, i get weird with when it comes to no, that no, but, I, I but, uh, compliment, Jermaine. thank you yeah, just take it dude, okay thank you obviously dude the, it's the, better than I, usual I, suspects I, exactly no no just kidding, I, I, no, just kidding. I, I, no, dude, honestly like <laughs> Yeah, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but I mean, look at that that crew that had that did that. I mean, like you did this, and you know they they didn't let you into film school. <laughs> oh, I know, man. Yeah, dude, I know. So it's so yeah. It's... One, of, one of the things that when we come back, I absolutely want to. I won't get into it now because you and I understand it. But then it'll be funny. I think funnier for everybody. But is it okay if we talk about? Um, some of the write-ups and uh, especially the the video you did on the oh absolutely on the, on the review. All right, so we're gonna come back here in about uh, a little over ten seconds. So we'll have five minutes to uh, wrap this up. So uh, okay. yeah, we get to the top of the hour. Top of the hour starts when we're ready or not. So cool. Here we go in five, four, <clears throat> two. Welcome back to ENC Radio Live. Uh, oh, we're having great conversations about this movie, even when we're on break. We got about five minutes here before we get to the top of the hour. Uh, so, Steve, you, you mentioned uh, while we were on break there that you wanted to talk about some of the write-ups that uh, came in on on this movie. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. that's I think it's perfect time because before the top of the hour, we can uh, I think we can knock this out real quick because. Uh, so when Tremaine, I had Tremaine on the podcast, and uh, we talked about rideshare movie and stuff, and we did our thing for the podcast. But then, not long after, and he had talked about hitting his goal and what his goal was on YouTube for, and all this. But there was like this, uh, I, I, I don't know, I had seen a video he put out on a bad review, and I had noticed other some bad reviews on his video. And so it was like, it, Tremaine didn't have a one to 10 scale. He was either, you know, 
a, people were giving him a two or a nine on a one to ten scale. There was no in between. It was weird. And some people were just like, what is this? And then other people were like, this is great. Good job. And probably not even knowing his history and, you know, that this is really his first big production and whatnot. But so there was a couple bad write ups. One of them, I can't remember which it was, called it the worst movie of the year. Yes. And, <laughs> and Tremaine did on his channel, did a nine minute video on this. And I'll let him tell you. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny. It's like it's like they say, you know, it's funny. Like I used to get really, I guess, uh, you know, you, you get offended. Like, oh, you make something, you think it's great, right? And then people say, oh, it actually sucks. I'm like, no, do, how dare you say that? You know, I think with this, it's so it's so interesting because it's like it became funny because whether it's and and that's the thing is everyone has their own uh, opinion and critique. And you know what? They might be right. It might be the worst movie of the year. You know, it could be, like I've heard everything from the greatest horror movie of the decade, right? I've heard that, like, geez, okay, I don't know about that. Then I've heard, like, the worst movie of, like, the century, you know what I mean? So it's like, it, it, it was, they, like Stephen was saying, there was really no in between. Either people thought it was, like, amazing, you know, groundbreaking, or they thought it was, like, absolutely terrible. So, you know, it's like, um, uh, you know, one of the biggest critiques was, like, it was this podcast. It's like, oh, it was, like, film, some... If, whoever does the Barstool Sports guys, like they have a film podcast. Uh, I don't know if you guys know those guys, but um, it's some Barstool Sports film, and they gave it one out of a hundred or zero. It's come someone has to give it zero out of a hundred, and they go, "Oh, it's it's about a fat Uber driver who sucks." <laughs> and it's like, okay, it's like the guy the guy just does bad things. He kills people. I can't believe it. You know, it's like, well, yes, he's the bad guy. He kills people. That's what bad guys do, right? Like it's for, for to, just to say that it sucks because the bad guy's bad and fat. I mean, that, that, you know, at least critique say, let's say, hey, you say it was poorly written. Say they didn't like the the acting. You know, that's all fair. That's all fair points, right? If you can't, if, you, you know. can't believe podcast hosts, anyways. They're all liars. Right, exactly. Right. Every every one of them. No, the guests are the worst, <laughs> though. But uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. Um. But, I was more, yeah, I'm more referring to your video on it because that's when I was just hysterically laughing. I'm like, I, you actually were an inspiration to me to not listen to other people. Well, you know, it's interesting. It, it's just, <laughs> it just becomes funny because, you know, it, it's like when you work so hard at something and, and like at the end of the day, it, it, it become, it, it, that's what it, the, the project ends up being. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's always that thing before you create something. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, this is my first movie. Oh, what if it sucks? Then it's like, well, what if it does suck? You know what? Actually, it's your first movie. It should suck. And if it doesn't suck, I, I think I don't think my movie sucks. But, like, look, I hope that it's not my best movie. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to right, be my right, best movie. Right. I, I, well, you know, the way we look at things when we, when we do our first show on something, we say, well, that's the worst show we're ever going to do on this. You know, we, get, we get better as we go. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, and, and it's always scary doing it the first time, and you're always saying, oh, what if it sucks? You should. Right. Hey, we're, we're getting up to the top of the hour, so uh, let's do this. We'll take the top of the hour break, check in with the news, all that kind of good stuff. We'll be back on the other side. We're going to keep this conversation going. You're listening to TNC Radio dot Live. You got Tom, you got Bill, you got Jason, uh, and Steve, and. Uh, hey ho. Hey ho. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we're all here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not remembering his name again. Here, I'm gonna type it in the chat so that you can just see it. <laughs> so, back in my... <laughs> so, Tremaine, so Tremaine, like somewhere in the in the next part, um, let's talk about. I mean, let's we'll get through this conversation, but let's talk about your new project. Definitely, yeah, definitely, and 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 I'm by all by all means, that you know, are you I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, and feel free, you guys. If I'm talking, you know, you guys feel free to. I want to hear from you guys. You know, feel free to chime in. Yeah, but we want to hear from you. I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from you. <laughs> no. Yeah, I got my questions about the weirdo food all over her face. Like, oh gosh. Oh yeah, she was that, great that, too. She. 
Yes. Dude, if you hate that, you should come eat dinner with my kids. Oh, my Lord. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Every meal, I'm like, yo, stop smacking. Please close your mouth. Yeah, right, yeah, it's got to whip them into shape. or t Tell them a, right. it's a quarter or a dollar, you know, every time. <laughs> I don't know. My daughter's 13. I'm like, you are going to start dating boys. Do you really want to eat like that <laughs> right. in front of your boyfriend? I don't think so. Dude, my cousin is is absolutely hilarious, and I when I last saw him, um, I, he has two daughters, and they they like we're just bonded, them like I am with my son. One of them's uh, when I saw her, she was like sixteen. The other one was thirteen, and the sixteen year old's like a wow. brainiac. The thirteen year old is a uh, join the meeting. The thirteen year old is a uh, is like a. a uh, I don't know. She's just crazy and funny. And they both came up and hugged me. And the 13 year old held, held on longer. And I was walking with her on my leg. And I'm like, yo, Tom, get this thing off me. And I, lo I love her. I'm like, what's up, Lily? It's time to get on them. And he's like, dude, Katie is going to be awesome. Libby is destined for the pull. No, oh, no. Oh, my God. Now that's a horror movie. That's a... <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, we, we have somebody else join in. Somebody. Yeah. Who's joining in? Yeah, me. Who's me? It's Bob. I wanted to ask Tremaine. Do you can't find the first date or not? Do I find the what? Do you kiss on the first date or not? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta have a good kiss at the first date. And who pays? I pay. Uh, okay, I guess I'm calling the wrong person. Oh, okay. gotcha. Okay. All right. Take care, man. The, the See, right. there. See you tomorrow, Bob. <laughs> who the hell was that? What is going on? I think somebody was calling in for a porn sometimes. What does it? What does this happen? What does that? Kick him out. Uh, it was like a dating no, 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 style, dude. It's too bad that wasn't on air. That was that was pretty funny. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you guys so know weird. who that was? No, dude. I'm telling you, I think somebody was probably calling it a dating site. I agree what? with Steve. Yeah. And they and they were like, "What the hell?" I think they were as confused as us. Like, "What the hell is this?" Wow. Well, you should have played it out then. If that, you should have rolled with it. We would have yeah. rolled with it. Oh yeah. He kind of did. He's like, "Absolutely." Yeah. And I'm the like, yeah. Guy's like, yeah. What? And, like, and who pays? He's like, "Who pays?" I'm like, "What does he want me to say?" I'm like, "I pay." You're gonna call a porner of one eight hundred. Why would you ask that? Like, hey, what are you wearing? That's what I would ask. Well, what I'm wondering is if it comes from, you know, because Tom has those Google numbers to call in. Oh. A lot of them, lot of them are so close to one another. Oh, so, okay. he came, But he, he asked, he, he said my name, though. He said my name. He said Tremaine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I did post on Facebook, but I don't really know a Bob. I didn't really recognize that voice, either. Yeah. Oh, so maybe it wasn't that then, Steve. If he, yeah, yeah, he didn't maybe. know his name. <laughs> it's very strange. That was... Well, that even makes it weirder though, because he didn't sound like he was a just absolutely drunk or anything. Either. No, he sounded like he was a hundred. He, he was <laughs> something. He was something. I don't know. I yeah, he was something. <laughs> what the hell was that? That was a horror movie. Right? That really I was. was. I wish it would have happened <laughs> online. You kiss? Online. I know. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to play that back? I don't know. Uh, th that's why I, I know actually I'm not recording the, the this side of the conversation. Oh so. my god! How we, oh my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> do we need this? Always that's record, fun. record everything. <laughs> okay, we're coming back here in three, two, one. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Hi. Thanks, Bob. Um, yeah, I may, may have been listening to a different show because um, I'm not sure, Tremaine. I think maybe you've got a date if you want one. Right, yeah, this Bob guy. Yeah, so you guys missed out. Uh, Bob, a person named Bob called in and asked if I kissed on the first date. And uh, it's yeah, a very interesting yeah. question. Hey, 
And who pays? Right. I, I did say yes if it's a good date. And then he's like, and then who? And he's like, and who pays? And I'm like, I I pay. And then he goes, uh, I guess I'm talking to the wrong person. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the answer he wanted. <laughs> right. He was just say, oh no, I make her pay. I make her pay. That That's is just... that is very strange that that the answers he should have been looking for oddly Tremaine gave just to be funny, you know, like, do you kiss on the first date? Yes. <laughs> you know, who pays? I pay. Like, those should be the answers you're looking for. And he's like, the wrong number. Do you yeah. think he was trying to relate because it was because of the movie and everyone was on dates? I don't know. I'm trying to find it. There's no real dates in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. This is, But he said my name. So it's like, like, was this a wrong number? It wasn't. So he said, I don't know, that's kind of very yeah, odd. Wow. Very strange. A little bit confused, but hey, this is live radio. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, off we go. All right, hey, we're, we're, we're back talking to Tremaine, who was the, uh, well, let's see, how, how does uh, QT put it? You chopped, shopped, uh, what, chopped, shot, and scored the movie. Did you? I did not score the movie. I no, uh, and and actually, I I only did a little bit of editing. Um, I, I our editor uh, Emily L. Fadley is a very talented, very amazing filmmaker in her own right. She edited she edited the movie. I did a little bit of like uh, a little bit of refining at the at the very end, uh, but no, she did vast majority of the the edit and. Uh, um, and then the score is, uh, the, the main theme score is my friend TJ Milana. TJ is a very talented uh, piano player, pianist, and composer and, and everything. And um, he, he, he's like, hey, do you need music for, for your movie? And I'm like, oh, yes, I do. And, and he showed me this piece that he had that he wrote, wrote like years ago. And it had that theme. Um, do 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 you know what you guys you can hear it I'm I can't I can't really recreate it but but uh he had that I'm like oh man I really like that and it was really creepy really eerie and then from there but he he doesn't really score films but uh my other friend Alex Walker Smith who's an incredible composer like just completely plays every single instrument uh digitally on his computer which is actually even crazier um, he scored the whole film, and uh, he did a stellar job, in, in my humble opinion. I, and, and, uh, and then also we had um, this amazing uh, string quartet, Atlas, do a string version of the theme song, and that just gives me chills. And so, like, at the very end of the movie, that, that, that's them. So it's all, uh, these sisters. I think they're sisters and then a, their, their friend, uh, this, band, this group, Atlas. So check them out, A-T-L-Y-S. Uh, they... Um, played the instruments, uh, so very talented uh, um, quartet. So, uh, Tremaine, I have a question for you. Did you do any kind of a cameo in this film? I did. Yes, yes. I, I was saying, if if Hitchcock was your inspiration in life, he was always cameoing in his films. This We're is true. Good. Yeah, this is true. So, so like you know, it's funny enough. I started off as an actor, and uh, I loved acting. I was in all, all the school plays every year from kindergarten to eighth grade. And then uh, in eighth grade, I was like, oh, wait a second. I had like, my access to my parents' video camera. I'm like, you know what? If I make the movie, I can always just put myself in the movie. <laughs> you know, it was like this revelation, you know. And uh, also just the audition process always terrified me. I was always, you know, I hated it. I hate the audition process. You know, it, it's it's very uncomfortable. It's very daunting, you know. Um, it's a lot, I mean, I, I'm over that now, but, but like, you know, it's still, it's still really, really scary. But, but yes, to answer your question, I do make a small cameo. I'm the bum, I'm the homeless guy that goes up to him at the drive through window. Oh um, my so God. Oh, that's you. That's me, okay. yeah. That's me, yeah. Which was one of the stranger scenes in that movie. <laughs> what is it? What? what? <laughs> Yeah, you know, funnily enough, that was based on a true story. I could not think of that uh, on my own. That was, that, I was in the, so I was in the, I, this happened to me. I was in a Wendy's drive through okay? When you're in a drive through you're stuck. The person's in front of you, you, they haven't gotten their food yet. You can't go anywhere. Someone's behind you, you can't go anywhere. Someone's, you know, so I was in this drive through in between going up, like between, af like after I ordered, before I got to the window, and this homeless guy who had one eye, 
very scary. It was just staring straight at me with his one eye. And, and, and his other eye had like this empty eye socket. And uh, he goes up to my window. It's like, what are you doing? He's going straight up to my window. You can't go. I'm, like, I'm a sitting duck. He goes up to my window. My window's rolled down. I roll up my window as he's walking up. I'm like, God, I don't know. You know, you, you don't know. It's like, you know, we're in LA. This is Hollywood. Okay. This is not the most glamorous uh, pl of places uh, that, uh, that, that Wendy's. And um, so he goes up to my window and he just taps on it and he's just staring at me. And I'm like, oh my God, like, ah, oh, what do I do? You know, what do I do? The car is still not moving. Anyway, I roll down my window and he just stares at me and he's like, got a quarter. <laughs> and I'm just like scrambling for a quarter. Like the one time, I think I, I literally, the day before I like emptied out the change from my car, I didn't have any quarters. I'm like, oh, you know what, screw it. I'll, I'll, I'll give him a dollar, like here's a dollar. And ended up being like a really nice guy and, and he was actually really nice. Oh, he's like, oh, thank you, you know. Like, you know, God bless you, you know. It was, ended up being like a really, really nice guy. He was really grateful for the dollar, so. Kind of molested that dollar. Um, yeah, 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 dude. And that's another thing. So that's another like going back to like go, going back to like the pet peeve type thing that I have. Like I hate when like if you're giving like a dollar or or you know if you're paying for something and then people like touch your hand as they're grabbing it. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, I hate that. I yeah, that. yeah. So like that and so like that's totally that's totally me one hundred percent. And really, like, we have the same pet peeves. Yeah, right. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's, and that's also, and then like you see how Jason like just kind of like, oh, he's like disgusted that he, that he like kind of touched his hand as he was grabbing the dollar, you know, so anyway. So and, Jeremy, my, my question for you is this, um, and I've had the opportunity to talk to other people in Hollywood. If you had to do one scene over again, you had the money, the budget, the people, all the, if there's something in there that you could do, redo, is there a particular scene or shot or something that you're like, ah, that's the one thing that, uh, I want to redo that one. You know, the, the, the one that comes to mind is the fire shot, the fire. We, uh, so we set D sharp on fire. Uh, one of my good friends, D sharp, he plays the, the, the character Tremaine. So th that was by him. He, he chose that character name, by the way, I'm not that egotistical to put my own name in, in that yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so we only had one take because, you know, um, we had the stuntman, uh, Carl, uh, who lit himself on fire for this movie. You know, we, we did, we did this, you know, you know, real thing. You can see on the behind the scenes, uh, how we did it. But the take that we did, like right before we were doing the take, we're supposed to shoot really high frame rate. So then when you slow it down, it's really crisp, really smooth. Right before we were about to do the take, the, ca the, the camera powered down. He had all the settings right and everything. And then we, he repowered it up and then he forgot to change the settings to a high frame rate. So it was 24 frames per second. So when you slow it down, it's only 12 frames per second. So in other words, it like, it gets kind of choppy when you slow it down. So if you notice like, the, like we, we, we kind of cut around that a little bit. So uh, that's, that's kind of how we did it. So, so yeah, to answer your question, it was also a very, very expensive uh, shot because you know, paying a guy to light himself on fire is not, is not really cheap, you know? And we only had one go at that, so. Um, but I mean, hey, look, it was it was a crazy throw light, which by the way, I lit the guy on fire and I put him out. So uh, yeah, no pressure, right? No pressure. So it was- I did, I did notice that scene was a little, it, I was like, oh, something's different about the film and this scene. I don't know, I can't quite figure it out. Yeah, and, and then like we we had to use part of the camera, which was a behind the scenes camera, from, the one from afar, uh, the angle when you like, you barely see it. So it's kind of funny, like, you know, D Sharp, who's like, I think he's He's six three, very tall, you know, big big guy with dreads. And then the stunt man, I think, is like five ten, very skinny guy. <laughs> so like, didn't really ma match up as well. We were supposed to get like a wig for uh, for him to make it match up a little bit better, but um, yeah, it's just kind of those things where it's like, man, well, well, we did our best with it, and and just kind of cut around it, and so. Yeah, we, we would have, I would have, if we had all the budget, we would have, you know, filmed that a bit, a bit differently, um, but. I thought, I was expecting a twist in this involving the, the preppy guy that kept asking him to come by and slip in $50 bills. I thought it was going to divert to him that he was going to be the bad guy. Well, he kind of is, well, he kind of is in a weird way. Like he's, you know, what, like, what's he doing to these girls? You know what I mean? That's what I was like, hey, what's he doing? Well, that's a good question. What, what do you think he's, what, well, what did you think he was doing? Let's grab that on the other 
other side of the break. We'll be right back on TNC Radio Live. Stay tuned. So, um, who's this other guy who's trying to join? Do we know this guy? I don't know. I heard it come in. What was the name? I, uh, um, I didn't catch it. Is he still in the waiting room? Yeah, we we'll let him in. I was gonna let him in while we were alive. He's an awesome. Tremaine, Tremaine posted, so maybe a, a friend of Tremaine's too. It could yeah, be. Join us. Hello. Hi. Hi who's this? I'm Carrie Martino. I just joined. Oh, Hello. Carrie, what's up? Carrie's a good friend of mine. Hey, hey, how's it going? It's going well. We're we're on a break right now, so uh, uh, yeah, could we could we bring Carrie on when we when we go Absolutely. back on? Oh, okay, Absolutely. great. Awesome. If we get a longer break, I picked a longer song because I wasn't sure. Well, we, were kidding. we we had a bad experience, Carrie, at the top of the ER with somebody <laughs> dialing in. Uh, uh, you, you understand, I was a little gun shy. I was like, oh, who the hell is this one now? And somebody, somebody wanted to date Jermaine, and uh, I think he wanted to date him. But, you know, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> I think Jermaine set him up, set that guy up, to, so it sounded like he was super famous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, if I was to... Tr- <laughs> If I was to set him up, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay that guy to to do it. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what... hey, the gentleman that just dialed in. Can you edit your um, your thing on uh, Zoom so we know your name, please, sir? He can't because he's in. Oh, I'm dialing the phone number. Yeah. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. His name's Carrie, though. Carrie Martell. Mar- Carrie Martell. Yeah, Carrie. Carrie. Okay, great. Thank you. I can do it. There you go. C A R. I do K-E-R. K-E-R-R-Y. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> I got it. Close enough. Well, thanks for joining us, sir. Great. Thanks for having me. So, um, yeah, so I know cool. almost nothing to do with uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just said, uh, oh, yeah. Carrie's, so Carrie goes by the millennial gentleman. He's the millennial gentleman himself. Okay. He, t- he teaches men how to yeah, become. Yes. Teaches men what? You go ahead, Carrie. You describe. So I, I try to give men lifestyle advice that I think is, you know, relevant to living in the year 2021, where uh, society has kind of lost, I think, a lot of what has historically made uh, us a great country and nation. So. I try to give men, you know, very traditional pro-masculinity advice. Yeah. Uh, but I also support guys, you know, actually trying to have families, be good fathers, uh, to dress well, to take care of themselves, to work out, you know, basic things like that. Uh, the, the magazine was created actually because uh, uh, shooting on one of Tremaine's films, I was, I was there as a in the film starring in it. Well, wait, yeah, why don't we, why don't we after, save this for coming yeah, back? Yeah, we'll, we'll do this when we come because back. This, this is relevant to how he knows him. So yeah. you, were, you were in the movie? He was oh, in another yeah, movie. In the, movie. <laughs> uh, oh, movie. the Bachelor Party episode two. Wow. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. yeah, well, we're coming back, right? Coming back. So, Minutes are cool. Yeah, just to... So, just so you know, the, the work, we were, confu- I mean, I was confused in the beginning of this, dude, that we're not live right now to the people. They're hearing music or whatever. We're on break, so we'll come right, so back. So. You're in the song Car Wash. Oh, nice. At the car yeah. wash. All the songs relate to driving in some way. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. So you, you guys picked all the picked all the music and play it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. Tremaine, um, I do voiceover work in Houston. If oh. you ever need anybody to do some voiceover stuff, and I know you're in California, you got a million good voices out there. But if I could ever do any voice work for you, please let me know. Absolutely, yeah. You, you've and got a great if you voice. Listen to him. He's he's. We, I called him silky smooth last week. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What, don't don't what, touch me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what what what? Uh, who, what so remind me of what's your name again? Who, who's talking? It's a Bill Waldrop. Bill. Okay, Bill. Okay, cool. Do you I, have a, just reach out I, I, I can I can hook you up with his email. Okay, awesome, sweet, thank but you. I don't kiss on the first day. So oh darn, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who pays? Who pays? I never pay. I'm a tight end. Okay. <laughs> 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 
so bizarre. Yeah, it's, like, cool. it's gonna go down in history if the creepiest call ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, I've, I've been filming, um, if you guys don't mind, I've been recording myself talking. So I did get that in a clip. Cool, cool. Coming in in five, four, three, two. Welcome back. Welcome back. TNC Radio Down Live. This is Driver Nation. I'm Tom, along with Bill and Tremaine and Steve and Jason. And did I leave any? Oh, we have a guest with us, Carrie. Welcome, Carrie. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. You betcha. Carrie, you're our friend of Jermaine's, is that correct? That is correct. All right. Uh, so uh, um, tell me how you guys know each other. Yeah, so I've, uh, uh, Jermaine and I have both worked in the entertainment industry for a lot of years. Well, I used to be a vice president at a film studio, and uh, Tremaine came on board as one of our sub network heads back when I ran a YouTube network and the, the studio had acquired it. So that's how I met Tremaine. Uh, I was a producer on one of the films Rides Share and I've also, you know, starred in some of his films in minor roles as well. Cool. And uh, so uh, we were talking about the different parts of uh, Rides Share here and I was asking Tremaine right before the break you know, if, if there was a scene he could do over or do in a different way. Uh, Tremaine, I was going to ask you about uh, when the girl gets hit by the car. Okay, yes. Um, well, 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 how, how did you do that one? Okay, yeah, so um, that is a very simple film trick. It's called a, mer it's a merge. So what you do is you have on the side, you notice it's that side angle, that's actually two shots. So we had we had her with a stuntman. Um, she had a uh, cord hooked up to her, like a bungee cord type thing, and a and a pad behind her. And the stuntman literally pulled her as she jumped back. Um, and that's in one shot. And then in the other shot, we keep the the camera stead like still on that like it has to be the exact same. It can't move at all. Um, and then you have. Uh, the car, you get the car back, like re reversing really quick and then stopping. And then you combine the two. And, and, so and that's what I thought you were doing. Uh, you, you know, Francis Ford Coppola did something similar in uh, The Godfather 2. And uh, when, when uh, the uh, mother of Vito Corleone gets uh, blasted by a shotgun, they yanked her with a, uh, a cord like that. Only they didn't, Ford, Francis Ford Coppola had no idea what he was doing. Yeah. That. <laughs> they, they, they broke like five of her ribs. Oh no! Oh <laughs> my gosh! Oh man! I get. And, 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 and this was repeated a few years later when Steven uh, Spielberg was doing Jaws, and the girl at the beginning's getting all pulled around. She's screaming. Yeah. She's screaming because they were like hurting her. Oh. And, and I think they broke a rib or two on her too. Oh, oh my god! So, yeah, you gotta be kind of careful with it. That's why I wanted to ask if that's what you were doing there because. That's what it looked like, and I was like, okay, is she all right? Because now any time I see somebody do that, I'm like, okay, it's not the 70s anymore. I think we know what we're doing, but hopefully... Yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah. funnily enough, that is a really good question. And, and she had had uh, some kind of surgery around her, that stomach area, too, so she was actually kind of extra fragile, but she was a trooper. We had the pad uh, out there for her, and... Um, you know, we, we had a comfortable le level of her like falling back and stuff. But funny you say Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> I actually, my friend Mario and I shot a video for Francis Ford Coppola's winery over the summer and I got to interview him. Wow. So cool. I interviewed him and I met him and uh, I, learned, I learned a very valuable lesson from Francis Ford Coppola himself. It'll stick with me for the rest of my life. Uh, do you know what it was? Can you? You guys want to know what it was? Sure, oh, absolutely. Francis Ford Coppola goes to me, he goes, money doesn't matter. Okay. You guys heard it here first, money doesn't matter. Keep in mind, we're, we're at his, uh, ch right. we're on his chateau of his 1,300 acre uh, property, okay? His winery is 230 acres, acres, guys. Oh. He owns forest regions, he owns mountain regions, 
He has uh, 20 or 30 houses on his property in addition to the vineyards and the winery. Um, and yeah, he told me money doesn't matter. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's yeah, what... Yeah. So if it doesn't matter, give it all to me. Right. Then, yeah, <laughs> right. feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like Mario and I who were staying at the Motel 6, uh, you yeah. know, uh, you know, he's telling that to me. And it, it's kind of like, oh, you know, I, I really wanted to say it and I wasn't going to say it because, I mean, we were hired by other people. So I would have really ruined the whole thing. But, I, you know, it, it, stuff like that, uh, you know, it's like, oh, hey, Francis, uh, would you like to trade bank accounts with me for, for, you know, for like a week? And then you could tell me money doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> I'll stay at your chateau. You know, you can you can take over, you know, my bank account, and uh, yeah, you, you tell me money doesn't matter, yeah, buddy. We'll you know, the motel six. So. <laughs> you know. Again, though, I mean, he's a really smart guy, and, and uh, it, it, was a, it was surreal, like interviewing him. I mean, he's he's a, a legend, uh, but it was funny because I mean, and he mentioned he's like, oh, he's like, you know, back in the seventies, I made this picture called The Godfather. It's it's like we know for we, we know Francis. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we're aware. We're aware, buddy. We're so in film. Yeah, we're it. we are in film, so you know, that was that was really interesting though. But other than that, I mean he was a really you know, he's he was very cordial and uh um uh you know, but but yeah, that was an interesting thing. That was crazy. It, it's like so surreal, you know. Um well, I wanna go back to Carrie here for a second. So yeah. Carrie, uh you know Tremaine better than uh, the rest of us do. What's something about Tremaine that we all ought to know, but we don't know yet? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> something Transparency is key here. Oh, oh, my God. We need to be fully transparent. <laughs> we know he kisses on the first date. That's so all we know. <laughs> and he pays. Yes. Play hard now he's a bit of a ladies' man. Play hard. No, no, no. Uh, no this, not true. This was not a guy true. that thinks... <laughs> I wish. He's, a, he's great at he's great at karaoke. <laughs> oh. What? what? <laughs> we, used to go down to, we used to go down to this bar in Hollywood called Sunset and Vinyl. It's considered to be one of these secret bars in Hollywood. It's above a pizza place. It's Steve. not you know widely advertised, and its claim to fame is that they have a bunch of record albums, and you can take a record album up and you can suggest it be played. So. We used to we used to hang out at night in Hollywood because I had a, a, a condo across the street from it, and we used to get drunk and sing songs into the night. So there's there's a fact about Tremaine. Hey ho, he's also <laughs> a fabulous singer. Hey, I, cool. I don't know about that, but we, thank you. Where Terry. can we see that on YouTube? Right. <laughs> Fortunately, there's nothing. <laughs> Fortunately, there's some there's some pretty good stuff that Tremaine puts up on himself on YouTube. Oh <laughs> my look, gosh! Man. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right, is... Tremaine, I've got another question about the rideshare movie. Yes. All right. So <clears throat> he has the couple in the back, kills them off, and he takes them out and puts them on the ground, and then the next shot shows a freight train going by. Yeah. Are we to believe that he put them on the tracks or? What was going on with yes, that Yes, 100 percent He put him on the train yeah, tracks. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Because we didn't see him, we saw him laying on the ground, but not on tracks. And that's why I was wondering. Well, it's kind of dark that you that you can see the tracks, but it, it I, you know it is pretty dark. It is kind of a dark shot. So that that's the implication at least. And when he when the train goes by, he kind of has that smirk on his face. Um right. that's like the so first kind of kill. So, so Bill, uh, you know, let me tell you a little bit about trains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bill, Bill, Bill is the host of the train station right here in TNC Radio about live. You can also download the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, Bill, I, I think really can you download this podcast? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but, but Bill, um, the. Uh, uh, I think you can't mess around with train tracks, right? You're not supposed to put anything on train even no. for minutes. That's yeah, like don't don't even put a penny on the tracks. Right, that's trespassing, right? Yes, or, it is. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh, Tremaine <laughs> did well by not actually putting the bodies. Oh the no, bed. no, we would now, never do that. The name of the rideshare company was that made up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, Hitch like Hitch a ride. That's also my little nod to to Hitchcock. So um, that's my oh, kind yeah, of. Are yeah. you aware that there is now a service called Hitch? I am not aware. Of is there? Is yes, it's it's a thing. Uh, actually, one of my Uber passengers told me about it. 
I don't know if it's nationwide or just in Texas. I don't know. But yeah, it's called Hitch. And what it is is like, if I'm going to drive from Houston to Dallas, I can go on this platform and say, I'm going to yeah. Dallas tomorrow, leaving at one in the afternoon. And you can take people with you and they pay you to ride with you all the way to Dallas. Oh. And on the return trip, and it's there's, there's another one that does that too. That's been doing it for a while. I don't know about Hitch, but there's another one that does that too, where it's basically yeah. it is it's hitchhiking, and it's yeah. like hitchhiking in the digital age. Yeah, wow. they all, everybody meets at Starbucks, whatever Starbucks they pick, to pick up and drop off. Oh. So it's always a safe location. But yeah, it's a. I just found out about it about a month ago, and I haven't done any trips yet, but it's there. Wow. Just download any. That's yeah. <laughs> the cool thing about that is, uh, Bill, I've, I've, I've been on there, and they actually pay me to ride with them because my company is just so wonderful, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, you bet. Wow. You bet. That is awesome. Wow. Just uh, wow. Oh, I mean, that's wonderful yeah. news. Yeah. <laughs> pay to be uh, the yeah. grace of your presence, right? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. They pay handsomely for it. Oh, that's good, uh, as they should. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back uh, more. Right here on TNC Radio. This is Driver Nation. Stay tuned. Yeah, I'm no, pushing it over there. Excellent. Start next. Try one more time. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Stephen. I getting this thing downloaded because I got to edit on on these and uh, starting seven new shows in the last month. I'm just behind. I, oh, no, I know who you are. I just I didn't know if we were there yet. I, I don't. I can't have the app because I I have uh, Apple. Um, um, which by the way should be there within the next seventy two hours. Hopefully. Right. My point. Yeah. I, I, I oh, just nice. point out that I can't get into the app to even see. And I know we've been talking about. It. I just didn't know if it was there yet. Yeah. Well, uh, if it was a podcast, you can get it anywhere. Yeah. Right. I meant within the app, though. Like. No, I, no I, I wouldn't know. You know, I, I don't know if on the website you can find all that either. I kind of yeah, looked at it a little, a, so I don't know. The I was just, I was I just catching up. <clears throat> so as a matter of fact, Bill, you probably saw that I updated all your podcasts while we uh, were on the air last time. Oh, oh, no, I haven't I haven't gone on there tonight. Thank yeah. you. Bill, oh, what, what is your show on? Because I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, with... The, the podcast thing, I don't know if I mean, maybe I'll do it, but if, when is it on on here? Uh, Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Central for one hour. So 5 p.m. here. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's called The Train Station. The and train I have station. a co-host, his name is Jim, and we're both big train fans. Love trains, ridden them all over the yeah, world. Yeah, I know. You've, you've told us. That's why I want to yeah. check it out. I want to see what you guys are talking about. Yeah, and the podcasts are up for the episodes. So Matter of fact, um, what was it? Episode three. Uh, the 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 guy did the train from Denver to where? Uh, no, yeah, the episode. Uh, was it three? I thought no, I think it was two. Uh, he rode the Rocky Mountaineer from Denver to Moab, Utah. The new little passenger train out there. Oh yeah, coming out of Denver. Yeah, there's that also that other great one you probably know about Royal Gorge. Oh, I've ridden that many times. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah the Rocky Mountaineer. You're right. Episode two. Yeah. Have you ever been down to uh, Chama, New Mexico and ridden that steam train? No. You need to. They're not running now. It's wintertime, but uh, they run like August to November or something like that. Up through the mountains. There's a winter in New Mexico. (laughs) Actually, there is. I mean, oddly, a lot of, I I know a lot of people who think Arizona and New Mexico are the same, but I have friends from New Mexico. Dude, they they live a lot like we do here in Colorado. When it comes through, it's cold, man. Yep. It's too cold. Yep. But they, they don't get as much, uh, you know, snow and moisture and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, Chama Chama is actually higher than Denver. It's almost ten thousand feet. Wow. So it gets very cold. That's got to be like the highest up in New Mexico, or right up there. Then. Yeah, dark clothes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Bye. Here we go. Here we go. Three, <clears throat> two. <laughs> TNCRadio.live. This is Driver Nation having a good time this evening. I hope you guys are having a great trip out there, getting set up for your Friday night drive. Um, you know, we got some uh, rough weather coming in over the weekend in New England. Uh, maybe even, uh, I hate to say this word, snow. Uh, hey, hey uh, Jason, up in the Grand Rapids area, did you catch up any of that snow in the last uh, 24, 48 hours? Yeah, we did. Just probably maybe like two inches, but the ground isn't quite frozen yet, so it all pretty much melted. So, 
Well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we 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 are suffering mightily here in the Houston area. It's been uh, been pretty rough as the uh, first major cold front of the season came through. Let's see, last night it got down to uh, forty eight degrees. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we had to turn on the heat and put on an extra blanket, get an extra dog for the bed. You know, it was just kind of uh, pretty <laughs> rough uh, today. 74 degrees, it'll be 74 uh, again tomorrow. We'll get up to 78 on Sunday. So we're not used to this uh, kind of cold weather down here in Houston, but we're trying to get over it somehow. Hey, hey Tom, it's can I ask go. real quick about all those um, houses that the pipes burst? Do you guys not regularly have furnaces down there? Is that Was that the issue? No, I mean, there's two issues there. One is the houses literally are not built for cold. Okay. They're just not. You, know, you, know, they're, you don't go through the, that, that kind of extra insulation and that kind of stuff. The pipes between the, the street and your house aren't built built for that kind of cold. And they're not um, buried very deep. Yeah, and, but in Houston, you can have a house and live in a house pretty comfortably most of the time without having a heater. Okay. You know, and, uh, where pretty much every house in Houston has to have AC. Or, or right, you know, right. you're not, not going to make it. But, but you can easily live in a house in Houston. Just like up in Chicago, there are a lot of people who don't have AC. Ugh. You know, because yeah. they get one of those 100-degree weeks in the middle of August, and you hear about all the people dying of, of heat illness in, you know, downtown Chicago without, you know, because most of the time they're fine. But uh, and that's kind of the same way it is down here in Houston. Most of the time, I mean, it's been up until this past February, it had been, I think, four or five years since my house had been below freezing. Yeah, we rarely get below freezing. If it happens, it's only a couple of nights. But getting down to 12 degrees, like Tom said, our infrastructure and homes are not built for that. We turned into a third world country for about three and a half days here. We had no electricity, no water, spotty cell service. Uh, It was rough. And and so ERCOT, the uh, Energy Reliability Council, I kid you not, Energy Reliability Council, who handles all that kind of stuff, uh, ERCOT announced this week that bill. Yeah. We have done absolutely nothing as far as improvements, and the same thing will happen again this year if we get down to 12 degrees again. That's because you guys want to be your own country. Come use the electricity with the rest we, of us. Well, we all, our power grid is separate from the rest of the, the country. Yeah, we have our own, yeah. and we used to be our own country, and we can't be again if we want to. How, how did that work out with having your own power <laughs> That's grid? That's the same thing I was thinking about, Dallas. <laughs> I'm like, come on, y'all. Yeah, well, that was that was a freak thing. It won't happen oh, again. It this won't happen again until it does. Me. Yeah, well. <laughs> so I don't know if I got my question answered, then we can move on. You do have furnaces in the house, right? Uh, yeah, most of us do. Okay, yes. cool. All right. If we have electricity to run them. Yeah, that was the problem. Right. Uh, and, and, and even though I have a gas furnace, it has an electric uh, motor in it, so... Right. Don't need that, that helpful. Yeah, that and, helpful. and I have a fireplace, and I had artificial logs, so we had it running, and we were fine. Yeah, and it was it was and cold, but I, we just huddled around the fireplace for three days. And, and my wife even figured out how to cook on the artificial fireplace uh, stuff, and uh, so we had. Wow. I, yeah, I was very impressed. Well, I, I fell asleep on the couch and uh, woke up, and it's like, man, something smells good. I guess the power's back on. My wife's over there in the fireplace cooking eggs. It's like, <laughs> Awesome. Yes. She's a good woman. Yeah, good gal. It's a good gal right there. So uh, back to the ride share movie. Is there going to be a sequel? I think everybody's waiting to know. Oh, thank you. Uh, I like the suspense. Uh, yes, 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 there is. There will, there will because be. Steve's uh, getting a role <laughs> in it. Yep. No, you're not. Yes, he is. So, oh, wow. so it's, and it's, I'll be, and I'll be the announcer. there you go. Yeah. So the parts, parts for everyone. Um, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's set up for the sequel. Yes. It's, it's not written yet. Um, it's, but yes, people have been asking and, uh, I kind of know where it's going to be, uh, in this, in the sequel and kind of where it's going to go. So, uh, yeah, I guess you guys heard it here first. Yes, there will be a sequel. Um, don't know, don't know, don't know when yet, but we'll keep you guys in the loop. And, um, very cool. and don't know when because of the project. Let's talk about, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm finishing up two, well, two projects. One's wrapping up pretty quickly here. Um, and then another is, uh, being edited as well. Um, 
so I have a cat, the Cat Town story, which is a, a documentary I co-produced and directed with my good friend Mario Glaviano. Um, and we are literally putting the final touches on it this weekend. Um, and we have a screening uh, mid-December for that. Uh, it's a cat going from uh, killer ride drivers to uh, how to rehabilitate and adopt cats. It's a little bit of a 180. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> yeah, so it was something that we kind of put together, you know, with the pandemic and 2020 and all that stuff. It's like, what can you really do? And it's something that's, it's like kind of a heartwarming tale, if you will. So we are, we're finishing up, um, that. And then I've got my latest thriller movie that we wrapped, we shot in August. Um, we filmed that in a, uh, whopping nine days. We shot a 92 page script in nine days. And uh, it's about an Instagram model who gets kidnapped at a fake photo shoot. So, um, wow. yeah. So, and that's loosely based on true events. Uh, and that, that one is called Simp. So you guys heard that here first as well. Simp? Simp. 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 So it's, uh, yeah. So that's kind of like a slang term all these kids these days are saying. Do you guys know, do you guys know what that means? No, I don't. Okay. Simple? It's basically like a guy, the best I could describe it, maybe, you know, the best I could describe it is like a, a guy that's very overly affectionate towards women and can't really get women, you know? So, uh, so you know, sorry, so I, sorry on my life, you know? No, so, so, yeah, I know, like, so, so the main character is like this guy that's, um, you know, really, really, well, there's two main characters. The, the lead is, a, is, uh, uh, this blonde, her name's Brooke Piedra, but in, in the movie, um, her name's Jessica. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's kind of shows the vulnerabilities of a, a, a lot of these apps, you know, like a lot of these models, if you're an attractive girl, like, you know, and you have like a hundred, a couple hundred thousand people following you, one of them is bound to be a little crazy. So, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's in post production right now. Uh, Mario, who I co-produced um, the Cat Town documentary with, was the director of photography on it. So that was really cool getting to work with him. Uh, the shots are incredible. We we got really like we lucked out. Um, the set the second day on set we got a we were, so I rented a cabin in the woods uh, on Airbnb to to make this movie, and uh, I asked for permission for them. Um, and everything and they graciously gave it to us and so we stayed at a cabin in the woods for for about seven of the shoot days um and shot majority of the film there and yeah it was fantastic the second day we were there we got a knock on the door right and uh it was the airbnb owner uh, the man he goes oh guys just to give you guys a heads up don't worry about the forest fire okay don't worry about it and i'm like uh <laughs> Well, I wasn't worried about any forest fire, but, but now I am worried about a forest fire. And he goes, oh no, don't worry, it's on the other side of the freeway. Uh, you know, if anything, it's just gonna get a little bit smoky, you know. I'm like, oh, oh, great, awesome, you know. So like, you know, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is, keep, keep in mind, this is August, Northern California, it gets 105 degree heat, you know, extreme fire weather. We're in, you know, it hadn't rained in however many days. We're in the middle of the forest. There's a one one road into this town, run, one road out. So if there's a fire, we're pretty much screwed. Um, so anyway, uh, we woke up the next morning, complete, like being like we were in a campfire, just the whole smoke, the whole area was completely covered in smoke, like very thick smoke. But luckily it was far enough away, it didn't get to us, but we do have really amazingly cool atmosphere for this movie. Oh my uh, gosh. I, I was gonna say, it probably helped with Magic Hour a lot. It, yeah, it helped with every like, hour, it was incredible. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it was, uh, the sound guy joke, he's, he goes, uh, he goes, it's basically a Tim Burton movie. It's like a Tim Burton movie, except without all the fog machines, we have the natural smoke machines, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it kind of, it's got this like kind of sleepy hollow type vibe, but like a yellowy, like dirty air feel. So yeah, it's cool. Like the, the movie set takes place over the, over the course of seven days. So, uh, you know, so, so I, I kind of like having a time limit on, um, on the film. Cause it's, I don't know, it's like, uh, uh, for rideshare was built in like one night, you know, it's like, I don't think this guy can really kill for just more than one night, you know, I don't know. Uh, but for this, it's like seven days. And then, um, so, 
uh, yeah, so she, she's supposed to get sold uh, at an auction uh, as a sex slave on the seventh day, and everything is built up to, to that, so, uh, yeah, that's... Interesting. Yeah. All right, yeah, looking forward to that one. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Be back in just a couple of minutes. You're listening to TNC Radio. Live. Stay tuned. Here's a little Tom Cochran. Life is a highway. All right, guys, uh, coming in for the home stretch here. Uh, we've got a four-minute break. Hey, the- since, we, since we have his, uh, his friend on, do you guys, because I, I, I heard you say that you were in one of the earlier movies. The, was it the Bachelor thing or the... Um... Yeah, he was in the Bachelor Party episode, too. Do you guys, do you guys <laughs> want to talk about that one for a minute? Yeah, all? yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. So I, that, I, was gonna, if, I can ask uh, Carrie about uh, the... Uh, uh, stuff he was talking about the. Uh, did you say it's a blog? What, uh, how are you doing that, Carrie? Yeah, it's it's a blog called MillennialGentleman.com. Yeah. It's yeah. Kind so of like the Playboy was born. Playboy to used to be before. Yeah, and, and basically what I want to do this last one here is just kind of go around, uh, let Steve talk about right here rodeo stuff coming up there and uh, what's going on with the gig economy, that kind of stuff. So everybody get their plugs in here. The uh, the last bit. Hey, Tom. I need, I, I need to call you on the phone. It's urgent. All right. I hope what I'm saying is interesting. I, I don't know. I've, I've been talking to you guys ear off, so I, I want to hear from you guys. You guys seem cool. I, I think it's been great, Jason. What do you think? Oh, Jason's muted. Is he? Jason... <laughs> He zoned out. He's like, screw this. He's like, I'm out of here. No, 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 dude. I'm sure all these guys are. We have, I mean, we had a buddy of mine who started a, um, a podcast uh, um, on, on corn, cornhole, of all things. And, I, and we had him on here. And I had no idea how much it had blown up. He's a friend of mine here from Denver. And I knew he was doing it. But, like, it's on ESPN3 every week. Or Oh, wow. I that's so cool that's that a, yeah that cool yeah that's so this. that yeah that's so that's so cool you guys can have a bunch of like a wide array of, there's really no so, limit so to. so really what it is is jason does the the gig economy podcast i do mine these guys do the radio station all through the day different kinds of things for truckers and then this is kind of our end of week just we could end up talking about anything oh cool awesome that's um, nice. i was t- Wow. Sorry, I had to do a reset there on the uh, station, so. It's okay, I just pee a little. (laughs) Hey, that's what, I had somebody text me that the, uh, it it, it had gone down. Yeah, move back up now. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. Am I going to have to repeat all what I said? No, just kidding, I won't won't do that. No. (laughs) No, I have the, I actually just saw that there was a text before too. It looks like there was going on for a little bit. Yeah, that's what Bill was calling me about there. Well, so yeah. Well, glad you guys caught it. Took care of it. Put out the fire, so to speak. Since since six thirty one, they're here. So the last the last eighteen minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's what Bill was saying. So, sorry about that. I guess when. Uh, oh shit! Was that. Yeah. Uh, you said you were recording this. Is is that right, Tremaine? Yeah, I'm just I just yeah. had my phone set up recording. Yeah, so if you could send that to me, so I can uh, when I do get this out there as a podcast, we can capture that then. Oh sure, yeah. okay. Or send it to all of us, or post it on your channel or something. Okay, yeah, yeah I will. I'll do that. Yeah, do yeah. post it on your channel. Okay, <laughs> I will. I will All right, Steven. so we're going to come back. I'm going to start with Carrie, and uh, you know, we have 10 minutes total, a little bit less than 10 minutes total, so everybody gets just a couple minutes to talk about what they're doing with their their stuff and uh, just pass it on to the next person. So, Carrie, uh, you pass it on to um, Jason. Jason. That's me. So how, how should I pass? Just, just say, uh, Jason, what's going on with your podcast? Okay. Right. He's, he's saying that he's saying to like uh, talk about your 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 stuff your and then, and then, and then just say, hey, Jason, what are you up to? Sure. 
Harry gets it. He, he, he's a long time in the business. Harry is seasoned yeah. professional. Right. I just want to make sure. Guys, it's, it's going to be a hopping weekend going into Thanksgiving, this weekend oh, or next weekend. Man, I'm going to be out there jumping all over it. Do you, do you drive on Wednesday night, Bill? Uh, the no. night before Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah. oh hell yeah. yeah. Is oh, that... sure. I'll, I'll drive probably every day but Thanksgiving Day. All the rest of them, I'll be out there jumping on it. So. Yep, make, making some bread. Yeah, so it's been, I heard it's been pretty good for you guys. Like, the pay is a lot better now, or... There's a, uh, no. No. <laughs> Who are you no. thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, they're charging the rider a lot more, but the drivers well, aren't getting it. Really? Here we go. Welcome back to TNC Radio Dot Live. Hey guys, we're coming into the home stretch here. Got about eight minutes before we get to the top of the hour. Sorry about the uh, technical difficulty we had there for a few minutes, but uh, we appreciate those of you who are listening, uh, letting us know that we had dropped off for a bit. Uh, you didn't miss anything too exciting, but I do want to go around the room <laughs> real quick and talk about what we've been doing. Uh, starting off with our guest who's in here today, Carrie. Uh, I understand you have a blog that uh, a lot of people may find some interest in. Tell us quickly about that one. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, so I have a blog called MillennialGentleman.com. It's a men's lifestyle entertainment blog for men. Uh, they're seeking to have a life of uh, excitement, uh, elegance, adventure. It's kind of like more old school Playboy without the porn, you know, the new Playboy has kind of been taken over by other people that are pushing for other types of ideologies. And I want something that's more, you know, traditionally masculine and advocating the best uh, that men can be. So I have that uh, blog. I also have another uh, newspaper I just started actually in my home town area called the Yamhill Advocate. Uh, I've been exposing uh, corruption in city governments and county governments as well. And uh, not just in the city, you know, that are happening here in the local area, but also in the schools as well. Uh, so that's what I've been doing with my time. Uh, Jason, what's, uh, what's been going on with your podcast? Well, we're just still doing the same old, same old, but we are going to record two episodes in a row in December on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. And the last one of the year is going to be our 100th episode. And wow. so it's going to be kind of a celebration. Steve uh, is going to be on there from Ride Chair Rodeo, of course. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to have a bunch of people. We're going to have one of our OG listeners from North Carolina actually drive up to be in the studio. Uh, so that, that should be fun. And uh, we've done more than 100, but this is like, you know, we've done a bunch of bonus episodes, but this will be the 100th actual, like, I don't know how to describe it, the the Wednesday night podcast. It, it'll be the 100th one. So, yeah, so that's what's going on. This is your 100th uh, bi bi monthly podcast. Yes. Yeah, wow. we probably recorded 130, 40 episodes because right. we call the bonus ones like when we interview people, just bonus episodes. So Right, so if you go back in time, it's a long, yeah, long Yeah, so we're, look, we're, we're looking forward to that. It's kind of a huge milestone for us, and uh, yeah, it's going to be great. So what about you, Steve? What do you got cooking? Um, well, I'm getting over a week of just some, not, not, I mean, they were amazing, but just some really tough conversation interviews. I mean, I really kind of did a lot with closing out the AB5 stuff, and uh, I've had all everybody on now that is top tier. I, it's pretty amazing that I've been able to do that. Um, I have uh, next week. I have uh, Sergio from uh, the Rideshare Guy. He is the uh, he's the only writer anymore who does Rideshare specifically, not the other spaces. Um, he met Harry through. Uh, writing about the rideshare guy 10 or like in 2014 how much he disagreed with harry and harry didn't know what he was talking about and all this stuff and harry hired him <laughs> and, just, and under the condition he could never edit anything he wrote 
So wow. Sergio's stuff is pretty amazing to read if you go search him. He's one of the oldest on there. But um, he lays it flat, and him and I have a, a an interview that's going to be awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And so, Tom, what are you up to? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I wanted to point out that both the uh, Gig Economy podcast and Ride Show Rodeo, you can catch those daily on, on weekdays at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. for the uh, Gig Economy podcast, and then at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, noon in the Central Time Zone, you can catch uh, Ride Show Rodeo, along with, and uh, we throw in a little Love Harry stuff here and there, too. Uh, so, um, you know, you we want to make sure that our ride share drivers can get the best in podcast. And sometimes when you're out there on the road, you don't really have time to download the next one and all that kind of stuff. So it gives you a chance to listen in without having to uh, spin through and say, all right, which one am I going to listen to this time? And uh, so we, we try to make it. On that note, you can download, Jason, my podcast, though. <laughs> And, well, and that's where I was going to. I mean, and, and so we tell you also about how you can download their stuff and uh, catch that, uh, on, you know, from their websites. Uh, well, speaking of which, Steve, how do they get to your uh, podcast? Um, simple. Just, uh, you know, you can, actually you can go to uberliftdrivers.com because we're actually, I, I've actually started now the, the overhaul of it. And so um, there's just some things that are about to be changing, but even right from uberliftdrivers.com, you'll see podcast, click that, and you can even right now still get to them. It'll be a, a different interface, but it still works right now. No glitches. It's it's up there. <laughs> Fantastic. And how about the Gig Economy podcast? Yeah, we're actually working on our website, too. Uh, it's still up there. It's uh... – Gosh, it's gigeconomy-podcast.com, which is annoying. But if you just search the Gig Economy Podcast, we're the first page on everything. So uh, Yeah, it's easy enough to find. I guess somebody else had that, and they didn't last long, huh? No, I, we actually tried to buy that domain from her. She was into music, uh, and it was, yeah, it was gigeconomypodcast.com. We offered her 100 bucks, and she said no. So she wasn't even using it. Yeah. All right, whatever. So whatever. yeah, we had to put the hyphen in there, but yeah, just search the Gig Economy podcast. There's some imposters out there, but uh, yeah, we're on the front page. So if you search that, and, so. and by the way, on UberLiftDrivers.com, uh, there's going to be a uh, um, kind of a family page, not a link to everybody in the world, but you can also link to Jason's stuff through there. Yeah, because we're bros. Yeah. We're actually, real quick, Tom, Steve and I are actually going to a podcast conference in August together. That's how close we are. There you wow. Go. Are you going to share a room? Hell yeah. Okay. Party, yeah. party time. Uh, and, and Bill, your uh, podcast, The Train Station, is now available on most places where you download podcasts. It'll be out on uh, uh, the Apple Store uh, probably by the end of the weekend. Okay, sounds good, yeah. People are welcome to tune in to the train station when we do it live right here on TNCRadio.live. It's Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Central Time. It's a one-hour show. If you ever had an interest in trains, model trains, real trains from childhood on up, uh, we've got some interesting guests and great stories, so we hope you join us. Yeah, we talk a lot about transportation every morning right here at TNCRadio.live starting at 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 o'clock in New York City. It's 6 o'clock then, uh, and, you know, got off over early in Los Angeles. But we talk about everything going on around weather and traffic and issues all around the uh, the nation. So I uh, catch that for information on all sorts of travel uh, and uh, those kinds of things. Coming up next here is Dan Cilio uh, talking sports. Guys, it's been wonderful. Thank you very, very much. And we'll catch you all back here, same time. Oh, not the same time, Nate. We're not going to be live next week, but the week after uh, next week's Thanksgiving. So uh, we're all going to take the week off, hang out with the family. Hang in there, drive safely, and we'll see you soon. TNCRadio.live. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. Hey, it was yeah, it Tremaine, yeah, Brown, dude. It was <laughs> amazing. Tremaine and Kerry, thanks for joining us, guys. We enjoyed having you. Yeah, yeah. thank you guys so much, Bill, Jason. And uh, yeah, Steven. Yeah. We love the Tom. movie. You look forward to your next project. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll follow. I'll, I'll have. I'll have to follow all you guys. Um, so. I'll, I'll hit. I'll hit you up. Like I said with Bill's stuff, I'll hit you up with all of them. Okay. I'll just get you the whole like kind of little list, and so you have a reference. Uh, hey, awesome. Bill, did you get your invitation to uh, Jason's 100th show? I did not. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Where's my invite, Jason? 
Where's mine? Uh, <laughs> What's up? Yeah, we're, Sorry. Did Carrie, did you get an invite? First date? <laughs> yeah. I, know, I, I, I kiss on the first date. Let me tell you. Hello. <laughs> that was great. Right, that was. Well, well, hey, how about this? Since you since you didn't, maybe it's really worth listening to. Yeah, no, I'll listen. I'll listen to it. No, Steve you guys. Steve's always trying to sell. I love it. Steve, I love it. Steve is <laughs> always trying to close. <laughs> I'll always be closing. Have a great weekend, guys. See you later. Thank you guys All so right. much. Take care. Later. Later. Bye. 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 There we go. Done. Well, thank you guys for watching this little video of me. I didn't really get to shout out myself at the end, but that's okay. Tremaine Hayho here, Hayho Studios. You got a really cool, exciting video coming up for you guys coming up next. Uh, and uh, coming up next week, you guys will see it. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you uh, to, to Jason and Steven and Bill and Tom, everyone, Kelly. If I missed you guys. And Carrie, thank you for, for hopping on. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, follow all of them. Uh, I'll put their links in the, the description below. And uh, yeah, that was a fun podcast. Thank you guys. Click this like button and subscribe. Thank you and good night.